Hello and welcome to Little Big Physics, a series I hope to continue producing in which we try to figure out the mechanics of the world of Little Big Planet from the ground up. See, figuring this stuff out in the real world is cool and all, but there's always somebody else who's already found the answers and ran them up somewhere, at least for all the easy stuff. That's why we're here, to bask in that experience of first-hand discovery ourselves. Before we can get into the complicated stuff, we need to lay a foundation. The language of physics is mathematics. To do mathematics, we need numbers. Okay, that's not strictly true, but we need numbers if we want to produce a model for how a little big planet works. But to have numbers, we need units. We'll start this series with questions that will get us on track. The psychoid that we all know and love is in fact quite small, but just how small is he? Our mission today is going to be answering that question in whatever terms we can define. Okay, so here's the plan for figuring out length. Conveniently enough, this game does have a built-in system of units of length. It's used by any kind of proximity sensor to set the minimum and maximum ranges, as well as by conductors like pistons to determine their lengths. In fact, if we take some kind of proximity sensor, a player sensor, or tag sensor, we can figure out how far away an object is from the sensor using the signal the sensor outputs. Using a tool such as a fort signal display, we can get a reading from this output. As an aside, I honestly don't know where I found this so many years ago, nor do I have any idea how it works, frankly, despite trying to open it up. Anyhow, with proximity sensors, this gives us a super accurate number that corresponds to the proportion of the distance between the minimum range of the sensor and the object to the distance between the minimum and the maximum ranges of the sensor. In other words, it gives us this quotient. But if we want to determine a distance as accurately as possible, there's a certain problem we need to work around. When the minimum distance of proximity sensor is set to zero, there's a dead zone around the sensor that will always give an output as if the distance between the sensor and the object was zero. The result is that the distance measured is actually the distance from the outside edge of the dead zone to the object, instead of from the sensor to the object. We could figure out how big this dead zone is, but it's easier to use another workaround. It happens to be that this dead zone disappears entirely if the minimum distance of the sensor is not set to zero. So we could just set the minimum distance to 0.1 and the problem is mostly solved, right? Unfortunately, that still produces the same issue, since the sensor is now measuring the distance from the object to 0.1 units away from the sensor. What we can do now, though, is just move the sensor to 0.1 units further from what we're measuring, and the two 0.1 unit offsets will cancel out, giving us an accurate number. Okay then, new problem. How do we know exactly how long 0.1 units is? Let's make it just a bit easier on ourselves and go with 1 unit instead. How will we find how long 1 unit is? Here's my setup. It's pretty simple. Two boxes, one with a tag sensor on its side, another with a tag on its side, both hidden in microchips. The sensor is inverted, so it outputs at full strength if no tag is in range, and at weaker strength, the closer a tag is, it's getting stronger, like normal. The box with the sensor, on the right, moves as slowly as I can get it to move until the tag is within its range of one unit, at which point the sensor stops giving a signal, stopping the movement. The distance between the two boxes will then be one unit, which we can use as a mold to make an object of one unit thickness. So, we let them loose, and... Okay, weird new problem. Despite the sensor and tag being directly on top of each other, the sensor isn't being tripped. Things do sometimes get a bit wonky at really small sizes in Lonely Planet, so maybe we should upscale it a bit. Let's repeat the same experiment with the longest distance we can reasonably have. It'll make life a lot easier down the road if it's a power of 2, so let's go with 2048 units. We'll worry about shrinking this down to 1 unit later, but this will likely be more accurate than trying to measure a single unit anyways. Being half a unit off of 2048 is way better than being half a unit off of 1. Unfortunately, at this distance, another problem appears, this time having to do with the difference between digital and analog outputs and inputs. This is actually vital to understand to create any kind of contraption with logic in the Little Big Planet, so I feel I should explain this. There are two types of signals in the Little Big Planet, digital and analog. Digital is easy, it's basically on or off. Exactly 1 or exactly 0, in a sense, though it can also be negative 1 in some cases. Think of a button. It's pressed, 1, or not, 0. Analog's more complicated. 
it can be anything from negative 1 to positive 1. When we get closer to proximity sensor and its output increases, that's an analog signal. Some objects let you change which kind of these two signals they output and how they interpret their input. If you tell a piston to fully extend when it has a signal and fully retract when it doesn't, it will interpret any input you give it as a digital input, even if it's analog. In this case, nearly any analog value greater than zero is treated as one. This is also what makes the wires light up. If the signal running through the wire is nearly zero, the wire doesn't light up. If it's bigger, it lights up. A problem, though, is when we're close to zero. See, we have the mover on our block set to digital input, but a tag sensor produces an analog input, based on how close the closest tag is. Remember the formula for the output of proximity sensor. We're actually using an inverted sensor on our experiment, but this explanation is easier if we forget about that for a moment. If the distance between the minimum range and the maximum range is way bigger than the distance between the object and the maximum range, this value is near zero, and that's when weird things happen. Watch what happens when I move the block closer to the tag, which is off to the left of the screen, and then further away again. Since the sensor is inverted though, the wire will light up when the output of the sensor is treated as zero, and turn off when the output is treated as one, instead of vice versa. The wire turns off, but then it stays off for a much longer distance afterwards. It turns out, the distance at which it turned back on again was 2048 units, meaning it first turned off at a much closer distance than it should have. Basically, the signal isn't treated as one until it's far enough away from zero, and then it's treated as 1 until the signal actually reaches 0 again. The result is that we have an outer portion of the sensor's range, which I'll call the unknown region, that can give a 1 or a 0. Approach it from the outside, and it gives a 0. Approach it from the inside, and it gives a 1. We're trying to use the sensor to measure exactly 2048 units though, so this poses an issue for us. Thankfully, even though it's tedious, we can just increase the minimum range of the sensor to counteract this. The size of the unknown region is proportional to the distance from the minimum range to the maximum range, since it's where the object is much closer to the maximum range than the minimum range, so moving the minimum range closer to the maximum range shrinks the unknown region to a negligible size. With some patience, we can get the box within one unit of 2048 units away from the tag on the other end of the level by setting the minimum range to 2047. Now all we have to do is put down some material in the space between the two boxes, and we'll have an object that's just about 2048 units long. So what now? Measuring anything with this would be like measuring your own height with a ruler that's a kilometer long. The nice thing about this being 2048 units long, though, is that if we just cut it in half a bunch of times, we'll get 1024, 512, 256, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and finally, one unit. So now, we just need a way to cut it in half. To be honest, I don't have any exact method for doing this. It's not like we could just use another ruler to do it, either. After all, if we had a ruler, we wouldn't need to make one, right? Well, not exactly. It turns out, this game does have something with rigorous spacing that we can use. The ruled paper material. We don't know how far apart its spacings are, so we can't define any absolute lengths with it, but we don't need that here. All we need is a way to make something half its original size. So we can just make it however many lines tall, I went with 22, but the more the better. Make the super big block just as tall by copying it and pasting it over top of itself, and then shrink the whole thing down so it's 11 lines tall. Do that 9 more times, and we have a block that's 1 unit wide. Except for one more problem. It turns out, Little Big Planet has this weird glitch where if you make a block really big, and then shrink it down to a more reasonable size, it'll suddenly turn invisible. Since we need to see this block to measure it, or measure anything else with it, this is an issue. Thankfully, we can just cut a hole of the same size out of another piece of material, and then fill that hole with something new, and we'll have a new non glitch block of the same size, ready for shrinking again. Now, we finally have the one unit block we've been looking for. If we put a proximity sensor next to it, we can see that it indeed does have a thickness of precisely one unit. That means we're ready to start measuring distances. For those wondering, no, we unfortunately can't just stack a bunch of these on top of each other to measure anything. Physics gets really weird in a little big planet at really small scales, just like real life come to think of it, so it's better to deal with one large object than a few small ones. Let's try out the setup we proposed earlier. I've put together a little contraption that outputs a signal proportional to the distance between the top of the lower block and the bottom of the upper block. 
To avoid the dead zone issue, the tag sensor on the bottom block has a minimum range of 1 unit, and its maximum range is 1000 units, making our 4 digit signal display accurate to 0.1 units. If we wanted to be more specific, we could just make the maximum range shorter, but after seeing just how short 1 unit is, I doubt we need to be accurate to 100th of a unit. We'll set Sackboy 1 unit above the sensor using the 1 unit block we created earlier to make sure his feet are right at the sensor's minimum range. The sensor is inverted, by the way, so that the number goes up the further away we go instead of going down, making a distance of 1000 units give a rating of 1. So just multiply the rating by 1000 to get the distance in in-game units. Now then, moment of truth. The true answer is Sackboy's height. Multiply that by 1000, and... precisely 10 units. Congratulations, Sackboy. You've learned something about yourself today. Now, since one in-game unit is so short, and trying to measure anything with it would be like measuring the distance from London to Guildford in centimeters, I propose we use Sackboy's height as our standard unit of measure. Sack doesn't really sound like a unit of length, though, so let's settle for length. For sack length. Thus, a ring of 1 on our sack measure contraption is 100 lengths, or 1 hectos length. Well, that's our answer to one of the many questions about the Little Big Planet universe. There's still plenty to find out, though even about Sackboy himself. Next time, we'll establish another one of our fundamental units so we can start moving on to more and more complicated concepts in hopes of explaining the various phenomena we see in Lone Egg Planet. Until then, I encourage everybody following along to share your own ideas about topics to explore, events to try to explain, or different approaches to what I did today. Science is not a one-person effort, and it's through the collective brainpower of everybody involved that we come up with new ideas and innovations. With that, take care everyone, and stay curious.